previously on Cardiac K. And all this goes to show me is that after My Hero ends presumably either next year or in 2023, and the same with Dr. Stone, and the same with Jujutsu Kaisen, Shonen Jump is not currently prepared for the next era to take their places immediately. I mean, I can't be right all the time. Look, since I dropped that video back in 2021, a lot has changed in the world of Shonen Jump and manga in general. Number one out of the top 25 best-selling manga of 2023, five of them were in weekly Shonen Jump magazine this year. And for reference, comparing that to previous years, there were nine in the top 30 back in 2019. There were six in the top 30 in 2020, and there were only three in the top 25 best-selling in 2021. And on top of that, of course, a lot of us in the industry and just on on YouTube in general were wrong about the ending date to ending year specifically of JJK and My Hero. Even though My Hero, honestly, I should have been right. Look, I know a lot has changed since I dropped that horribly shot, produced, and made video back in 2021. Look at you, the wannabe Agent Zero Super Eye Patch Wolf motherfucker. So I think a good place to start in this video to answer the question that I posed in the title and thumbnail is to take a look back the past few years of Weekly Shonen Jump, see where we've been, see where I was right, where I was wrong, and where we as Shonen Jump fans and readers have to look forward to for the future. We are now in an era where whether whether due to the health concerns of many writers, mangaka, and illustrators, just the more common understanding of the dangers of the manga industry, or just a desire to tell more concise, coherent, and ultimately shorter stories, leading to some of the series that we're getting in the magazine specifically, if not across all of manga, getting shorter in size and length. Pause. Hey, Very rarely in the past decade have we seen even the attempts at manga that are super long running like the series we've witnessed span decades in the 90s and 2000s. There isn't a problem with this unless you think that the brand recognition of having a series that is ever present in the magazine can only be a positive due to the popularity of the industry or the magazine as a whole. But regardless, I was <laughs> fucking right. I also nailed down the fact that Jump has been trigger happy very early into manga life cycles to axe different series while continuously introducing new series with the hope of producing magazine mainstays. WSJ hasn't been the most flexible magazine in all of the manga industry for decades now, but it's really apparent when you start to see even more high profile series like Ayakashi Triangle and Black Clover having to switch magazines for published schedule and the cancelization of some, at the very least in the West, fan favorites such as Phantom Seer, Ayashiman, and Tenmaku Cinema. And in the wake of this, the magazine has produced just a 30% survival survival rate in the 2020 so far, with at this moment having seven series that are within a year of starting publication, potentially on the cancelization block, and now quickly turn into eight once My Hero Academia ends. Continuing my streak of correctness, I stated previously that it was very unhealthy for the magazine's sales to be completely reliant on series that are fading and ending like My Hero Academia or back in 2022 with Dr. Stone or just literal vampire series getting resurgences due to their continuing ongoing anime like Haikyuu, Demon Slayer, and others that have ended in the magazine. As a byproduct of having so many shorter series in the later 2010s and being so cancel happy in the 2020s, Weekly Shonen Jump has produced a situation where you basically have One Piece, JJK, a series that is becoming increasingly unreliable in terms of dominance and in how long the manga even even has left in publication as of the writing of this video in my hero and then you basically have everyone else granted blue blocks and sakamoto days have surpassed even my expectations as a fan of both manga and in 2023 garnered over a million sales and it's nothing to snooze at at all and is a great stepping stone for both of those series but even with that there's no guarantee at the continued length and progression of those stories for two to three to five more years and with three total series out of those top five basically being guaranteed to not be long running from this point forward, it's still not the best situation to be in. Now, before I get too far ahead in my glorious raid over Weekly Shonen Jump, I want to also acknowledge the few things, and I mean very few, that I was wrong about. Mostly the widely accepted predictions of the endings of JJK and MHA in 2023, like I mentioned before. <clears throat> uh, hey, this is Editor Cardiac here. As of the actual editing of the final of this video, this is awkward, but uh, My Hero's over, and JJK is over in like 
a month. So to amend this, I was halfway wrong, but I was still mostly right. The effects of my prediction, of course, did not take place until a year after I predicted, but the reality that like Shonen Jump has to do something in terms of introducing new series, promoting their current series, or find ways for them to get anime adaptations very quickly has happened, will continue to happen, and is happening right before our eyes. Continue. Another prediction that I got kind of wrong that I mentioned earlier is that I didn't foresee Blue Box, Sakamoto Days, and even Mashal seeing as much success in terms of how many copies they could sell of volumes or of just manga in general this early into their series publication. I just didn't see it, I'll be honest. I thought we were potentially another year off from seeing 1 million plus totals from the two former, and for the latter, not only am I a hater, but I didn't see an ending boost for the series. But regardless, congratulations to all the manga could involve. Now real quick, I just want to kind of rattle off some observations that we've made that I didn't really include in my original video that have prospered in the magazine over the past few years. Even though I mentioned earlier that Jump has been really cancel happy in the 2020s, it's still not ridiculous considering the exodus of series that ended from 2019 to 2021. In the mid 2010s, there were quite a lot of different diverse series that came to an end at the turn of the decade. So a lot of the new series that are coming into Jump and getting canceled is really them just trying to replenish the lineup because of how many series ended or got canceled because of outside factors that affected the manga. Also, there have been a lot more breaks that Jump has afforded to combat health issues and hiatuses in the magazine. Of course, you have the hiatus of something like Ruby Dragon, Hunter Hunter, and between Oda, Horikoshi, and Gege, they've taken their breaks as well over the course of the past few years. But even younger mangaka and newer series have been afforded a couple week breaks here and there, even early into their series' life cycle, which has helped, I believe, potentially make a better and more healthy environment for mangaka to come into the magazine and actually thrive and not end their career just when they die. I also think that the magazine kind of stopped fishing for the next big action shonen. Granted, you could argue that they probably found it with potentially Kagurabachi, but I think that in general over the past few years, they've become more comfortable with expanding back into more genres more often with little regard to what historically fills out those shonen pages. You have Akane Banashi, which is a story about a teenager who's fulfilling their father's role of basically career-long physical storyteller. It's amazing. It's rooted in a specifically, I believe, only Japanese or the very least Asian career. It doesn't really exist out here in the West, and it's still finding sales success at the very least in Japan, and potentially can get an anime in the future. Brewery Dragon was just a coming of age story that took the world by storm when it came out, I believe setting the sales record for the first volume of the series. And although being on hiatus for a while, it's good to see it back in the magazine and more accessible by being on Jump Plus. Elusive Samurai, despite not having as many high sales numbers, has been able to find a consistent audience and been able to survive in the magazine for quite a long time. Even beyond that though, with the coming of the times and the further popularization of the manga industry growing, it's brought to to light the load and realities of full-time mangaka and jump and as a result created more opportunities especially for older and more seasoned writers to schedule and take breaks to maintain health and keep the quality of their series high. I doubt that if not for the popularization of the figureheads or just the personalities that have come up in the manga industry specifically Hajime Isayama, Akira Toriyama, and Echiro Oda I don't think that the publishers and magazines would feel forced enough to allow for more flexible schedules schedules and longer breaks, as well as just more flexibility in terms of how to write a series and how much control that potentially these writers now have over their own works of art. I think that due to this, and also just along with the times, we've come to realize that the monopoly and unquestioned dominance is over from Weekly Shonen Jump. Manga is more diverse and more easily accessible than ever, and the popular series are beginning to be found outside of these pages much more often. But there's an entire dominant anime genre that has completely completely taken over the past decade of anime releases. That's based off of stories uploaded on a random website where random niggas just go up there and write stories about random Japanese people getting hit by a truck and getting transferred to a random fantasy world. Because of this sporadicness in terms of how to see at least manga to anime success and then that popularity then goes back to the manga, I think that that has caused a lot of people to rethink how we think about series that are coming into the magazine. I think oftentimes when manga end in the 
magazine, we look towards certain series coming in that Jump will bring in to kind of replenish a certain theme or genre that is usually a constant in the magazine. But I think specifically with My Hero's ending, one thing we'll see is not trying to get another superhero series, similar to how they didn't try to replenish Chainsaw Man's tragic, gory, devil fighting plot. Now we definitely saw a more darker series with a flamboyant or eccentric cast to balance out moods and add some wackiness, but even unlike that, I think Jump will more so look to replace Horikoshi's star manga by introducing series that incorporate historically Western or American themes, genres, tropes, or even just the world in general. Both Horikoshi and Fujimoto's manga take heavy story beats and inspiration from Western culture, whether that be the idea of a superhero, what being a hero or villain even means, whether or not you should kill, different important lore bits and drops later in Chainsaw Man, and even later incorporating the states themselves into a part of a My Hero arc very annoying. Kagurabachi may have already resonated with American audiences, but a story that truly feels partially based off both Western and Japanese trends in history may soon enter the magazine. But honestly, even that's not mandatory either. This magazine is no longer and truly has never been the gatekeeper of manga of the year, Japan's bestseller or the next hit anime adaptation award. If you want the next hit shonen sports series and you want it with a slice of romance, that's Blue Box for you. If you want it with some competitive angst, you can go and see Blue Lock as well. If you want your assassination plot with a side of comedy, you have your pickings between Kindergarten Wars or a slightly older main character in Sakamoto days. Magazine be damned, and honestly, with the blending for content and media intended for kids and young adults blurring the lines more than ever now, genre and demographic be damned as well. This video, as well as its predecessor, as well as many other videos on the platform, originated as both a continuation, a tribute, and an inspiration from Super Eye Patch Wolf's longtime series analyzing the state and the slate of the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine on a yearly basis. And as of 2022's rendition of that on his channel, he retired it. And I am using this video to say that it should be retired for good from everybody. Manga is more than weekly shonen jump. Hell, shonen manga is more than just jump. So at this stage in the community with so many diverse genres, themes, settings, and stories, as well as so many different types of videos and content and things that we can do to bring light to different aspects of the manga and anime community, there's no need to narrow the spotlight on just one group of series that will always be ready to give us more good and great stories when the ocean is now full of widely accessible manga to satisfy those shonen urges we all have. I want to thank everybody that watched this video, any part of it, or has skipped to this part because it says ending. I, I'm back. This is being recorded not too long before it will be actually edited and put up on the channel. I have a better workflow back at home, clearly. I have the same amount of responsibility, but in different ways. So now I should be able to consistently record, edit, get videos out to you guys. Um, shout out to Dreamer for helping me edit this video, if not just editing this video in full. Um, his description, his links, his Twitch will be down in the description, if not up there. Um, I have a better camera. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, we have a better workflow. Um, things are more secure now. I have a bunch of scripts ready. I have a second channel that I'll be letting you guys in on soon, but it's not really related to anything that I'll ever talk about on here either. So I doubt many of you will be interested in that. Go to the Patreon if you feel generous enough and have the disposable income to help me out to basically just, you know, get this thing rolling. Um, I'm ready to give YouTube a chance that I haven't been able to the past damn near two years, basically since I've been in university and still through thick and thin, you guys are here watching. So I truly thank you for that. I really appreciate you all because with these videos, I want to cover topics that span the things that I'm passionate about and that I think a lot of other people are passionate about, but I want to relate to it on a different level than I think that people are currently doing on the platform. And I think that I can definitely do that with you all's support, with you all's help, with Dreamer's help, with uh, anyone who's on the Patreon, with anyone who is interested in whatever will be on the second channel, and with anyone who has ever visited the Cardiac K channel. Thank you for watching. Hope y'all have a good day. And peace.